Gegnerische Ziele gesichtet. Gegnerische Torpedos gesichtet! Jawohl! Eigene Basis verteidigen! Gute Arbeit! everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we'll be looking at the premium ship that is in the current Blitz Pass and because it's a German ship I had to get my hands on it. This is the Prinz Eitel Friedrich. That was a Mackensen class battlecruiser so this is not actually a battleship historically. Uh, she was built along in the First World War at least you know the lower half really. Yeah, built alongside the Bayern-class battleships, the Mackensen-class battlecruisers weren't really going anywhere. They were supposed to supersede the Dörflinger-class battlecruisers, but not too much is really actually known about the exact layout and the exact specifications. Most, uh, most, most sources just assume that it'll be a very, very similar uh, layout to the Dörflingers. Now, what they wanted with the Mackensen class was to get bigger guns. And the problem is if you have bigger guns, you have heavier turrets, which means you either your ship is lower in the water, which means your ship's gonna be slower because it has a higher displacement, or you have to make a bigger ship, which then has limitations because you have to actually find a shipyard to build it in. And you have things like canals to get the ship from the shipyard into the ocean which have a certain size and if the ship's bigger than the canal and you have a ship that you can get into the ocean which is generally considered useful for ships to be able to do so uh, there were certain limitations i think a tonnage limit that they set was 30 uh, 30 000, because otherwise they just wouldn't have been able to squeeze the thing through but they did want to upgrade the main guns uh, actually initially to uh, 380s but because they were too big and well, would have made the ship bigger 
uh, but they did want bigger ones than the 305s they had previously. They settled on 350s. So uh, somewhat of an interesting caliber that we haven't really seen in the German line quite yet. But yes, she was never completed because, well, um, like with all the with all the other naval expenses, eventually they focused more on submarines, and resources were needed elsewhere. And then the war wasn't going all that well. Everybody kept dying, and nobody got anything done. And in the end, uh, on, I think only the hull got got built and was actually launched. But they never completed the turrets, the superstructure, and all the other bits that are generally considered useful to have in in a warship. And the hull was then eventually scrapped somewhere in the 1920s, because nobody really knew what to do with it. So, um, Prince Eitel Friedrich, named after one of the sons of the emperor, by the way. And uh, Eitel is an interesting name. Uh, it's not a name you find in, in German today anymore, but uh, the word Eitel actually means uh, vain. And I don't think that's what it meant back then, <laughs> but for German speakers, it still kind of sounds... Basically, this this ship is... For, for a German who who just reads this, this ship would be called the Vain Prince Frederick. <laughs> so... <laughs> Can you have a vanity with this ship? Let's, let's explore. Um, obviously, this being a tier 6 premium battleship, or battle cruiser, really, we're going to have to co compare her to the Bayern. And... Um, potentially the Graf Spee. But let's have a look first. So we've got uh, 39,000 hit points, which is um, more than you have in the tier seven French battleship. <laughs> anyway, uh, the the armor, given that this is a battle cruiser and she was built for speed, not so much for armor, is relatively low for, for a German ship. This is something to consider, but in return, we do get a very reasonable amount of speed for a T6 battleship, battle cruiser. Like I mentioned, the guns are 350s, so these are laid out in twin turrets, as is kind of custom, and they're not obviously as hard hitting as, well, 380s that you find on the Bayern. But in return, she gets a blistering array of secondaries. So we've got the main 150mm secondaries in in uh, single casemates, two rolls of seven. And we've got the 105 millimeter dual purpose guns, uh, eight twins uh, all around the ship, which are the auto secondaries on this. Which means she also gets a slightly better large caliber AA. Let's actually compare her. I don't think I have the actual Bayern around here. Let me see if I can, um, there we go. I have the, the black Bayern, but I think the black Bayern and the, and the Bayern are similar on, on paper, so this should be a valid comparison. Because the Bayern obviously is the tech tree ship that you can get for free, whereas this one you have to pay for. Um, she does have a little bit less health than the Bayern, and you can see it in the damage reduction and in the torpedo damage reduction. The um, the Prince Eitel Friedrich is more of a battle cruiser. She is not as tanky as the Bayern is. The max speed, on the other hand, she is uh, well, a valid four knots quicker than the Bayern. She's slightly quicker to get up to speed and she is somewhat more maneuverable than the Bayern as well. The main guns, well, obviously being 350 millimeter, have a somewhat reduced amount of alpha damage and they're not quite as citadel happy as the Bayern's 380s. She gets more, she gets four more of the 150 millimeter main secondaries, and she gets uh, two twins more of the auto secondaries. Other than that, the values on the secondaries are exactly the same, all both in range and in uh, in damage and everything else. And yes, because she gets more of the 105mm dual purpose guns, she actually has a better large caliber AA as well than the Bayern. In terms of concealment, uh, it's, it's, a, it's round about just the same. Uh, I've got. Oh, sorry. I've actually got the historical camo here. That's. I should. I should take that away. Otherwise, it's not a fair comparison. So sorry. Let's do that again. Um, oh, she actually. She actually has more health than the Bayern. Sorry, I take that back. She has very slightly more health than than the Bayern, but still not not as good as an armor. Uh, not as good an armor protection. And yeah, other than that, uh, range is is very similar. On the mains and the secondaries are completely identical. 
Only that the Prince Friedrich obviously gets more of them. And yeah, concealment wise, uh, it's it's not a big difference. Ship skills. Let's have a quick look. Uh, standard standard stuff for for a German ship. Uh, sonar and precise aim. So if you if you're training captains, it's, it's absolutely viable. Layout wise, equi equipment wise, uh, again I've built her for for secondaries. Although you are have you are ever so slightly less capable of brawling in this ship. Um, because of the slightly reduced, slightly reduced armor, and you feel that, so she she does take damage quite uh, quite easily, but I still think that especially against destroyers with the increased maneuverability and very very uh, good set of secondaries, she is actually quite dangerous. So secondary secondary module uh, propulsion and steering is the setup that I've, I've gone with. Uh, the commander, I've, I've just put uh, Franz von Hippe here because, again, this is a premium ship, so I can, you know, I can use it as a captain trainer. He is not quite at level 11 yet. I'm very much looking forward to the APCS. But yeah, the, the, key, the key parts here, and you're going to see that in battle, is the improved marksman, marksman skill, um, the uh, recon, and especially the sixth sense. So I will actually see who's targeting me. Which in a, a ship that relies more on maneuverability than on on tanking is is a good thing. It's really a good thing to have. And yes, obviously the improved close quarters combat expert, which gives us better dispersion on these things. But uh, yeah, otherwise you you can use her totally as a captain trainer for just normal German battleships. That's absolutely a fine set. The uh, the battle honors, given that this is a tier six, you're gonna get copper for it, and it's it's not difficult to. It's not difficult to get, really. What else to look at? The Historical Camo. The Historical Camo gives us hit points, range, dispersion, and torpedo damage reduction. So more geared towards the main guns. And the main guns aren't going to be as punchy as, let's say, the 380s of the Bayern. The, 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 the dispersion at long range isn't great, but you're still perfectly capable of uh, dealing with, uh, with cruisers, and I would still be firing armor-piercing at enemy battleships. But yeah, it's, it's all about the secondaries as is common on German battleships. Anyway, um, let's let's have a quick battle and then um, we'll, 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 I will talk about quickly if it's worth to get the Blitz Pass. We're out here on Frozen Shelter in Epicenter mode. And Epicenter mode honestly has been annoying the crap out of me recently because I've been trying to grind through the rune. And I probably get, I don't know, about 75, 80% of my battles in epicenter on the rune. And the rune is really, really not very useful in epicenter mode. But this isn't about the rune, this is about the Prince Eitel Friedrich. So we're playing Frozen Shelter epicenter, we're bottom tier, uh, King George, Colorado, Queen Elizabeth, and we do have to watch out for that, the Grasse. Now the Grasse is a very, very dangerous ship, because he can burn me down. And obviously we have three destroyers and uh, De Grasse and Duca might, might make mincemeat out of them in the center. So, what do we have to watch out for? Two enemy destroyers, Aka and T61. Uh, so we'll assume that our DDs are going to, going to head for the center. And uh, we'll see where we spawn. Epicenter in, in a battle cruiser. You don't, it's kind of same like with the Odin, you don't want to just blindly rush into things. You you do need to find yourself a position where you can take, def, uh, where you can take a defensive stance if necessary until you know where the enemy, how the enemy team is dispositioned. So I'm going to head along with this Jervis here, just, uh, you know, just down the side next, uh, and that island there in front of me might be a good place to just position myself initially and see where where the enemy team is. Now, I haven't spotted anyone yet, but they are in the outer ring, obviously. And uh, yeah, again, you really don't want to rush blindly into the center with a ship like this, especially bottom tier. Because if you get focus fired, you don't have the same tanking abilities than you say have on the Bayern. But she does seven and 27 and a half knots uh, of speed, which gives you more capabilities of repositioning. And this is what this kind of play is all about in these sort of ships. Now we are taking center. That our lone Jervis is going center. The other Jervis here is going left flank. So I'm going to head going to head down left because that allows me to assist in the capture of the outer ring, 
And we still, oh, there is still the grass. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure that that degrass isn't isn't getting um, isn't isn't getting shots at the center. So there could be an enemy destroyer so in that gap, but I'm not spotted, so there isn't right now. And uh, I I want to support that Jervis and just keep the degrass from doing what he's doing best, which is um, you know like setting things on fire and and helping out in the center. There's the T61. Okay, I don't think he's got torps away, but there's the Degrasse. Hello. I think he stopped. Okay. So he's he's backing off. So yeah, that's just an overpenetration, but he's got torpedoes out against the Jervis. And um, I want to keep that Degrasse busy. Okay, there's the Duca. Duca is going to try and set me on fire. And the rest of our team is kind of flanking around the other side. They're, okay, so the Destroyer has to duke it out in the center with that T61. Uh, good luck to you, buddy. And I'm going to try and keep the, both that King George and the De Grasse busy. And that means I am going to leave the outer ring. But uh, it's more important... Okay, there comes some... These are probably Duca Torps or De Grasse Torps. I haven't really paid attention. But I've got the Hydra up just in case there are more De Grasse Torps coming around here. Because the De, De Grasse has, an, has excellent angles. But uh, yeah, he's going behind the island. We are controlling the outer ring because the rest of our team is sitting there... Uh, sitting on the other side, so I really just want to make sure that that the grass keeps being focused on me, which which can help the destroyer out. Yeah, shoot at me, don't shoot at the destroyer. There come the de grass torps. Okay, I've seen these coming. That's why I've got the hydro up. So I'm just going to slow down and dodge those. Yeah, I want to keep the de grass busy, and I want to keep him from um, doing something about the destroyers in the cent the destroyer in the center, because we are currently holding all three cups. So. This is not about um, doing doing damage, and you usually say, why, why are you not inside the capture circle? Well, I would be, but right, <laughs> right now my, my priority is keeping that Jervis alive and keeping keeping these two busy. The, the grass isn't going to capture, and as long as he sits in that position, he's not going to do anything, uh, well, uh, other than uh, potentially setting me on fire or torpedoing me, but he's not going to do anything about the center. And we're holding all three capture circles. So even if I'm not going to be able to... Um, you know, uh, win win by sinking everything. Okay, now, now the the Jervis is uh, poking out a little bit more than I. Yeah, yeah, he sees he's getting shot at by the De Grasse. Do I have angles at the De Grasse? No, not right now. So shots out at the King George. 150s out with the 150s. You do have to aim at uh, things like the stern, and then you do a lot of damage with those. De Grasse is just out of just out of secondary range. He's probably got torpedoes away, so I'm going to slow down a little bit uh, to throw his aim off and then speed up again but uh, this is a good player so i do have to be careful okay he stopped uh, shots out for full speed ahead again okay i uh, see that <laughs> that's what you can do with 350s and again the the grass isn't shooting at the center he's 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 keeping his he's keeping his fire up okay there come the torps single fire not damage conning this secondaries are doing a lot of damage against the king george there uh, one torp see this is why you don't damage control single fires because then i would have been perma flooding i'm probably gonna die here because I've got, I'm now, my damage cons on cooldown and the Degrasse is hiding such that I can't citadel him. And I've got the King George shooting at me, so I'm probably going to be on fire. Yeah, okay, so I'm dead. But that's fine. I have kept the Degrasse from um, doing anything about the center. And look at the points. We're, <laughs> we're 500 points ahead. I got a couple more shots out at the Degrasse, but now I'm probably going to be dying at this point. Can I get him? No, I can't get him. But that's fine, right? Look at... L because the rest of my team has been positioned inside, giving me the freedom to loop around on the flank and keep these two basically for, I mean, we're five minutes into the battle. For five minutes, we've kept these these two, that King George V and that De Grasse, uh, from being effective in, po in, a, in a points sort of direction. Now, it would, have been it would have been nice if the Jervis had actually been able to torpedo the King George, which was kind of my plan here. But it's, it's still okay, right? Because that means... Nobody has done anything about the center cup. Uh, okay, we're going to lose Jervis. But because the, the rest of my team has been holding the outer ring, the De Grasse hasn't been useful at all in terms of points income. Yes, they've killed me after five minutes. And uh, I haven't taken any of them down. But, <laughs> again, look at the points. So, uh, this worked. Yeah, the De Grasse is now going to kill the Jervis, but it's not going to help him. Because, uh, yeah... <laughs> Jervis is not going to hit him with torps. Um, 
well, yeah, we're, we're going to win on points. So this, these are sort of, uh, sort of things you can do in, in a, in a quicker ship, like the, uh, like the Prince Eitel Friedrich. You can run a flank and you can do, you, well, you, you can't always do this, obviously, because you're depending on the rest of your, of the general uh, situation. But in a scenario like this, where my team's actually capping, I can do this. I can loop around, and I keep. I can keep these two ships from, um, you know, from doing mayhem, and protect destroyers and these kind of things. So, how, how does she compare to to the other ships? She definitely um, plays differently. I would say the same way that the Odin plays differently from something like the Turpids. Uh, she's a more, she, she's a more maneuverable ship and a, a faster ship but does have to pick her battles. I still enjoy the ship very much. Uh, and just like the original Mackensen class design has led to things like the Gneisenau and the Scharnhorst, this is a good precursor to these ships as well. So if you are, it, it's it's not a tier six Gneisenau or tier six Scharnhorst, but um, it's kind of a good lead up to these ships as well. Uh, obviously, this being a German ship, I very much enjoy, but you do have to play a little bit smart and uh, you do have to pick your battles because the 350s are not as punchy as the Bayern's 380s, and while you have more secondaries, which makes you a lot more dangerous against destroyers, uh, you, you're still not a cruiser. You're really just a, you're, you're in a battle cruiser role. So I think she's a good addition. She's not overpowered. And she makes a good captain trainer, obviously. And if you enjoy this kind of playstyle, then it's absolutely worth it. And yes, I mean, the Blitz Pass is not just this ship, but is also um, a bunch of resources. So I think, in, at least for me, if you are interested in a tier 6 battlecruiser, and um, you have the money to spare, and you think it's worth it, and you have the time to grind through the Blitz Pass, I think it's, I think it's 10 US. I think it was about 15 Australian dollars. For me, pretty much worth it, yeah. I think it's a, it's a good ship, it's a fun ship, and um, it's a good, a good choice. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.